Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. It is Wednesday, January 9th, and I am Ryan Lee Gilbert. And I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we are joined once again here in the studio by the wonderful Eric King. Hi, everybody. And we have a very special guest with us today, one we of our do. very favorite yes. people. We have Kaylee Ann Voorhees here from the yes. Phantom of the yes. Opera. So Christine Dye herself yes. is here in the studio. All you Phantom fans are going to be very excited. We're going to chat with Kaylee Ann Voorhees in just a second. But first, Andy and I are going to talk about today's top five. This stage diva is making a return to film. Yes, this is really exciting. This kind is of very unexpected exciting. News Anytime today. this name comes yeah, up. Yeah, man. <laughs> so we found out today that Patti Lapone is making a return to the screen yes. in the new film, Cliffs of Freedom. Now, this is a film that is about uh, the Greek War of Independence in 1821. Oh, sure, that yeah. one. Yes. <laughs> we all so know I don't it. think there's going to be singing, but there's going to be some hearty acting. Yes. Um, of and course. she's going to co star with Christopher Plummer, which is pretty cool. That's very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So this film is going to be released in March. Um, Patty has been on screen before. As we know, she's most recently done a lot of guest starring roles on, roles on TV shows Ugly Betty, Crazy Ex Girlfriend, Mom, Penny Dreadful. Um, you probably remember her from Life Goes On. I was say, my mom and I used to watch Life Goes age. On together. Oh yes. my God, Life <laughs> yeah. Goes On. I just love that, that show so much. I miss it. Um, so this is really, really super pumped. Uh, it is. Exciting, yeah. Of course, she's busy wait. right now. Yes, yeah, yeah. she's mm -hmm. on stage right now in company in London. But lots so, of Patty in yeah, our future. Yeah, so look out for that film. And we had hoped we'd get to see this performance again somehow, someday, Somewhere. <laughs> well done. <laughs> well done. I like that. Uh, Corey Cott. We're talking about Corey Cott signing on to uh, repeat his acclaimed turn as Tony in West Side Story for a new production, or for the same production, but now being put up the Lyric Opera of Chicago, uh, May 3rd through June 2nd of this year. Of course, he first played the role of Tony in Washington at Washington, D.C.'s Kennedy Center. Uh, director Francesca Zambello will return to helm the production once again. Uh, Julio Mungi will also recreate create his choreo the choreography of Jerome Robbins once again for this production. Um, and he has some, new Corey has some new people joining him as well. Michaela Bennett will be Maria, Amanda Castro as Anita, Manuel Stark Santos as Bernardo, Brett Thiel as Riff, and additional casting is forthcoming. So some new names will be announced yeah. as well soon. Um, of course, this Chicago production launches ahead of, we know that there's a Broadway revival directed yes. by Ivo Van Hova, headed to Broadway. Um, that begins uh, performances on December 10th, so that's still a ways away. And yeah. then Tony Kushner has written an adaptation of West Side Story to be directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, and we know Ansel Elgort yes. is playing Tony in that production. We don't so have a Broadway Tony yet. We do so not have a Broadway maybe, Tony yet. Maybe, just maybe. We're Who crossing knows? our maybe fingers here. all of these worlds will combine right? soon. But lots and lots of West Side Story. Uh, we love Corey Cott so much. We do. And his turn as Tony was amazing. So yes. good for him and good for all of us. And casting is complete for this West End premiere. Yes, so Ryan was just telling me that he saw Waitress on Broadway last night. I did. You, who Sarah is, Bareilles. Who's in a row? Sarah Bareilles. And Gavin Creel. Okay. You Gavin may have Creel. heard of them. Mm -hmm. yeah, so as we all know, Waitress is launching in London yes. uh, very soon. And we got the final bit of casting today. We found out that Sean Prendergast is going to take on the role of Old Joe. Uh, so this production is going to appear at the Adelphi Theater beginning on February 8th ahead of a March 7th opening. Now, as we all know, Catherine McPhee is reprising her turn. She made her Broadway debut. Yes, yeah, not and she was ago. amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the rest of the cast um, is going to be, David Hunter is playing Dr. Pometer, Jack McBrayer is playing Ogie. It's a dynamite cast, so really if you're is. across the pond, definitely check out Waitress. Any opportunity you have to see Waitress, yes. <laughs> do it. And casting is also complete for this other West End premiere. <laughs> yes, uh, Anne Washburn's Twilight Zone stage uh, stage play. So we heard about this a little while ago. They are taking uh, Rod Sterling's uh, you know Twilight Zone and adapting it for a stage, and combining some of the stories. Uh, it will be directed by Richard Jones, and it will play at the Ambassadors Theater on the West End beginning on March 4th. Um, so they had a debut engagement at the Almeida Theater, and now it is moving um, to this theater as well. Reprising their performances will be Oliver 
Alvin Wilson, Adriana Bertola, and Neil Haig. Uh, they will be joined by Alicia Bailey, Natasha J. Barnes, Nicholas Karimi, Dan Crosley, Dyfan Dwyfor, Lauren O'Neill, and Matthew Steer. Um, it is based on the stories of the show, uh, along with Charles Bo Beaumont and Richard Matheson. Um, yeah. Ordinary people find themselves in extraordinary circumstances. Twilight Zone. We all know the Twilight there Zone. There we go. And, and Anne Jordan Washburn Peele, is such a good fit she, for this piece. Absolutely. If you saw Mr. Burns, she's uh, super exactly. talented. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. incredible. And of course, Jordan Peele is rebooting the Twilight Zone for CBS All yes. Access. So it's another popular property totally. right now. And guess what? It's more West End casting. <laughs> yes, look at that. <laughs> so we found out today uh, some new stars who will be going into Everybody's Talking About Jamie, the Olivier nominated musical, which is a that big everyone hit. Everyone's obsessed. Right? Everyone's obsessed. Yeah. I'm crossing my toes and my fingers that it comes over here. Toes I think, first. You know, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we, we already know that um, some new stars will be going in. Uh, we found out today that Haley Tamadon will be taking over the role of Miss Hedge. Sila. Pardon me. Sejal Keshwala will play Ray, and Sabrina Sandhu will play Pretty Pasha. And a whole other new group of ensemble members will also be joining the cast on January 27th. So uh, if you're in Very London, exciting. see Waitress yeah. and see everybody's talking about Absolutely. Jamie and the Twilight Zone. Okay. <laughs> and also some yeah. late breaking news right before we came yes. in here. Of course, Choir Boy, Terrell Alvin McCraney's play, uh, opened last night at yeah. the Samuel J. Friedman Theater to rave reviews. Yes. Uh, and a one-week extension was yes, given to through this. January 24th. Uh, February 24th. Oh, February 24th. Right. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. So yeah. February 24th, you go see Choir Boy. Yeah, and what's so cool about that is that the star, Jeremy Pope, Yes. Will end on February 24th, and then four days later, he'll start previews in Ain't Too Proud on Broadway. Wow. Like, unreal. What a, what a year for Mr. Young okay. Jeremy. Talk about a put-in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> Absolutely. right? And, of course, we will have lots of coverage from the Choir Bay opening night very soon. Portraits, Matt Roden, Red Carpet Challenge, all sorts of fun things coming yes. your way very soon. Um, very excited. I'm seeing that tonight. Yes. It's so good, guys. Very Definitely excited. I was so yes. moved by it. Andy, thank yeah, you so much yeah, for the news. Yeah, you bet it. Me. Eric, why don't you tell us about today's very special guest? I'd love to. Kaylee Ann Voorhees is currently Yay. singing the music of the night as Christine Daae in The Phantom of the Opera. Voorhees was previously the alternate Christine, where she became the youngest actress to play Christine in the New York production. She also appeared in the Harold Prince Review, Prince of Broadway, and made her opera debut this winter in New York City Opera's Candide. Follow her on Twitter at Kaylee Vu and on Instagram at Kaylee Ann underscore Vu. And as always, leave all your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Ryan and Kaylee. Hello there, Kaylee. Hey, Good guys. to see you again. Nice to see Last you Last time again. you were here for Live at Five, I got to chat with you. Yes. I, I think we're just going to be always paired it's together. It's just now, you, you know, and It's me. just fate now. <laughs> How are you doing? How I'm is, doing great. How's Phantom? Phantom is as wonderful as always. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You have some wonderful people over in your cast right I now really with do. you. I really do. 31 years. 31 this years. This production. Absolutely mine. Do you, does yes. it still... Does it still amaze you every day when you get up and you say, oh, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to go play Christine. <laughs> it really does. Broadway. It never gets old. Yeah. It never gets old. And of course, you know, with, with the fans that we have mm -hmm. and with the following that the show has, I mean, it's just... It's so much fun, and it's so wonderful. And I love Christine, and you yeah. Know. What do you love most about playing this character? I mean, obviously, you know, we all know Christine. We're all familiar. But what what do you love most about bringing this this woman to life every night? Um, I would I would probably say that um, just kind of the journey that she goes through. It's just it's such a transformation in her, mm -hmm. and by the end, she really gets a chance to like stand up. For herself yeah. and uh, kind of just going through that every night and uh, I just find her very likable mm -hmm. and it's a lot of fun to do especially with Ben and Jay right now as right. as the other people in the show because they're just so much fun of course so uh, yeah I would probably say just her her being her mm -hmm. you know what I mean right uh, <laughs> what, what kind of uh, much has been made of the sort of Cinderella story that you've mm. had here to Broadway. You made your debut at 20 yes. playing Christine. What kind of a bedrock do you think this show and this character has given you as you as you go on in your career? Um, in, in a weird kind of way, Phantom, when I first entered it, gave me a sense of stability mm -hmm. just because it has been going on for 31 years and uh, it, it really is 
not going to be closing anytime no, no, soon. No, there's no fear <laughs> of that. <laughs> um, but um, it's it's one of those things where a lot of times what I've learned in theater is that a sense of stability is really rare and really hard to find. And I got very lucky in yeah. that when I came here so lo- so young, um, I had that that foundation sure. right away. Right. Are there, are there aspects of the character and just the, the sort of work that it takes for the show that it has been instilled in you now? Yeah, I would say it's hard to do something for so long or so many head, times yeah. and not sort of take stuff away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I would say, yeah, I... I don't know. It's kind of influenced my acting a lot. Sure. Because it's changed so much from the time that I was 20 and I was still in school, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I was still figuring things out and learning things. Well, we're always learning things. Sure. But I was but yeah, so new. Kind of just being thrown right into Exactly. It. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and till, till now, which obviously I've gotten a chance to do some other stuff and go on tour and then do Prince, which Prince is the last Broadway, time I saw you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's it's different and it has definitely given me an opportunity to grow as an actor as a person Mm -hmm. you know phantom has been really really great for that right and what's something you've learned about the fans of this show having played christine for so long what's Um, what's something that stands out about the people (laughs) probably loyalty yeah i guess is like the big (laughs) the big word of it all um i've never met people (laughs) Is looking a mess. Just oh, soak stop. all of this. Shit. Stop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I love you. Um, no, I would say I would say the loyalty of the fans is amazing. It's amazing to witness. I I was saying to people, we have a fan. Her name is Naomi, and she comes once a year, sometimes twice mm-hmm. a year, and she sees the show multiple times, and. Every performance before we walk into the theater and when we walk out, she gives us like little packaged snacks. Oh. But like the that's, dedication that's, of that. My yeah. parents aren't even that dedicated. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're right. So it's one of those things where it's it's really a pleasure and it it's heartwarming mm-hmm. just to see the effect that it has on um, the fans and young people yeah. and I don't know. And no, wonderful. and the, it's just that they keep coming and there are always yes. new fans, yes. which is something that is, is so amazing, amazing about this show. <laughs> yeah. You also couldn't ask for two better scene partners really than couldn't. Ben Crawford and J. Armstrong Johnson. Yes. What do you uh, enjoy most about working across from each of those gentlemen? Um, they're so much fun. And uh, if you know me or if you know them, like, Fun is pretty much the the like main the word there. Like we're there to have a good time. Well, you no, know, also it's a kind of a dark show, so you have to well, kind of keep the right. keep so the fun it energy. Can't be too on dark, TV. too quick. <laughs> right. But um, Ben, on top of being just like wonderful people and mm-hmm. wonderful scene partners, um, they're incredibly talented. Yeah, and they're just really great to be around, and that that changes the dynamic of a cast. I think mm-hmm. more than anything is working with people that you genuinely like being around. Right, They're right. wonderful. And what has your... What, <laughs> they I are. Love we that. agree. <laughs> we, uh, and what ha, what's your relationship like with Andrew Lloyd Webber? Do you, is he on speed dial? Do you just, no. just call him up? <laughs> um, just... <laughs> I wish. Isn't that the dream? Um, no, I, I, he has always been so kind we've Mm -hmm. met multiple times i met him um i actually met him the night that i opened the show right because uh sierra bogus was finishing her run when i first Mm -hmm. came in and so he was there for that and so he stayed for my opening night and that was the first time that i met him but i've met him multiple times afterwards and we always talk for a few minutes and he's always been nothing but genuinely kind to me yeah and so um it's just been wonderful i would probably say i'm i'm closest to Hal, obviously, mm-hmm. just because of the history, right. but um, Hal's the best. Yeah, what's, yeah. What, what's your relationship with him? I mean, he's great. <laughs> He'll like he's he's very much like a grandfather figure. Sure. You know what I mean? In mm-hmm. a sense that every once in a while, 
he'll send me a text and it'll always have like multiple emojis in it. And I'm always gagged. <laughs> so good to know. I know. That's I'm always like gagged that he like knows how to use emojis. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, hold on. Like I got to save these pictures. And he's, uh, he's the best. Yeah. But yeah, I think I'm probably, it's easier to have a relationship with him just because he's in and out of the show just sure, a little bit more because he lives yeah. right around the corner. But so. yeah, two good contacts to have Wonderful in your Wonderful people. <laughs> yes, Absolutely. For sure. Did you make any New Year's resolutions for 2019? Um, Are you a New Year's resolution person? You know, I, I am, but we're talking like broad strokes. Sure. Do you know what I yes, mean? We're yeah. talking like general concepts. Mm-hmm. So I would probably say uh, I made the New Year's resolution to kind of... Uh, make sure that I have like a grateful attitude okay. you know what I mean yep. because that's always just like wonderful mm-hmm. to have and uh, to be like a little bit healthier <laughs> how so I, I don't know how far that one's gonna go but like I eat terribly and I don't drink a ton of liquid and so mm-hmm. I should probably just like generally yeah, maybe get out to the gym a little too. more, stay yeah. hydrated. <laughs> like we're talking broad strokes. Mm-hmm. You know okay, what I mean? so just so just a general improvement yes. over things and in moving forward. The idea okay. of of you know looking to the future, mm-hmm. moving forward, and doing the best we can. Yeah. Are you a risk taker? Do you like to do no. dangerous things? <laughs> like no. people are always like, oh, I'm gonna like jump out of a plane. No. I'm I'm gonna do no. That's I don't. None need, of that appeals to you. I don't need that. I don't need. I have enough <laughs> so the anxiety. Show doesn't need that. I have saying. enough anxiety in my right. day-to-day life. Mm-hmm. I don't need to jump out of a plane. Yeah, no. Just buy a new book. Exactly. You know, just, yeah, that's, yes. Do a new Netflix. Watch show. a TV show. Absolutely. Bandersnatch. Yes. Well, I know. Uh, how <laughs> did you enjoy? I know you're a big comics person. You I are, am. You're a very big comics person. <laughs> I think we talked about this a little bit. We did. Um, have there been certain things you've seen? read experience lately that you are just you are a big fan of that you would recommend you know huh you know I've kind of fallen behind on the comics thing but I go to Comic Con every year I and I will say this last year I went to the Runaways panel which is like a oh, Hulu okay. yes, thing Hulu. that they do yes, yeah. um, and Runaways is great mm-hmm. I've been a big I've been a big fan that one's a lot of fun it is and have you seen Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse yeah. I have you and have. it is it is, if you haven't seen it... It's unbelievable. You have to go yeah, see it. Yeah, it's absolutely it's incredible. It's so good. Mm-hmm. It's Agreed. so good. Agreed. Yes. Yeah, the absolutely. The cast, the animation, big fan. Yeah, big absolutely. Fan. Me too. Eric, what would some of our viewers Hi. and readers yeah, like to yes. know from Kaylee? Okay, Question. so Michael would like to know, mm-hmm. what were some of your favorite musical Broadway or non-Broadway cast recordings that you listened to growing up? Mm. Oh, I... Went through. I went through this phase in college where I probably listened to Sunday in the Park with George mm, a hundred yeah. times. It's a popular answer. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> like that's just did. one of those things where every song is just like on it. Mm-hmm. I think um, I loved Into the Woods growing up. How can you not? Right. I yeah, honestly, yeah. I honestly was like such a big fan of Phantom of the Opera. Of um, course. You're also Again. Contract- contractually obligated. Well, obligated yes. to say what happened there. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> contractually <laughs> obligated to say that you like this one. Yes, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say <laughs> anything kind of like classic Sondheim mm-hmm. or classic musical theater. I was totally, I was totally into. Yeah. Do you have a? Do you keep like a musical bucket list, you know, in like your head or written of things that you would love to do or do you kind of just leave it, you know? I kind of leave it be. I obviously, I have musicals that I loved so much growing up that I would love to be a part of them. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I was never really one to have a list of like, these are the 10 characters that I have to play before I'm dead. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, I just kind of leave it to chance. Certainly. uh, yeah. Let, let the let the stars align. Let the wind take me where it will. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So one viewer would like to know how has your Christine? How is it different from when you started? I mean, you were so young yes. when you started, and now I'm sure you have so much more experience. Yes. How how has it changed? Um, I would say <laughs> across the board, she is less scared because I mm. myself am less 
scared. When I yeah. first got to the show, I was just so nervous all the time, uh, just <laughs> generally. And so, <laughs> and so I think I think she has calmed mm -hmm. uh to the point where just my acting choices probably become more clear mm -hmm. and so uh i would say she's gained confidence across the board and uh it's less it's less sporadic i think it just flows more and it will continue to change as sure. as anything will but uh yeah i would probably say settled yeah. Settled. And as a member of this cast who's been with the show for a while, and is there a sense of, do you feel a sense of leadership that you need to sort of maintain over um, there or, or just being like a, a constant? Yeah, I would probably say, I, I would, I probably wouldn't use the word leadership, but I would use the word like welcoming because mm -hmm. there are a few people in the cast that we've been there on and off or mostly on so long that whenever we get new people in, we want to make sure that they become a part of us quickly, right. of that course. no one feels left out or like they, they haven't been there as long as the rest of us. So always ready to offer help always ready to, you know, go out to brunch or, mm -hmm. you know, grab a drink or whatever, whatever that means. I would probably say that is, that's the biggest change yeah. because I was so thankful when they did no, that. No, of course, of it. course. Is there also like a piece of having a piece of advice that like for future Christine's that you kind of have tucked away as, um, or just a, a nugget of guidance? Yeah, I would probably say... Uh, try not to worry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> try not. <laughs> try not to let it, the the dauntingness of it freak you out, and uh, the costumes get easier. <laughs> they get easier. Yes. Okay, all right. I'd say generally that's the piece. <laughs> Sierra gave that one to me when I first got into the show, and mm -hmm. I will continue to give it to anyone after me. Is that right. costumes? <laughs> get easier because they're big <laughs> right yeah. and what about in fan art i know you must get lots yes. and lots of wonderful it's fan great. art do you do you hang it all up around your dressing room do yes you take it home well i most of the time i used to take it home mm -hmm. and then ali started hanging it up e. in our room mm -hmm. ali well started hanging it up in our room and i was like oh, that's the best idea yeah, that's yeah. what i should have been doing this whole time because <laughs> then whenever you take a video in your room or you have any you money backstage you do broadway.com myspace yeah, you know <laughs> uh, it's all right there yeah. and it, you can people can see it all the time and then you get reminded of it when you're there so uh, that is that's i've started doing that yeah. and that's a wonderful thing and now be honest with me here how yeah. good are you at responding to your fan mail, I'm not. A, I'm not amazed. <laughs> um, I'm good in a sense that it it starts to get out, but like yeah. it's it's a lot. There's something of here. me with mail. It's not. It's definitely me. It's something about <laughs> mail. You know right. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like the act of. Yeah. I'm I'm good at responding on Instagram, Twitter. Of you know what I yeah, mean? Yes. Things well, that it's I can. Also, it's probably do a generational quickly. thing as well. Too, it right? weirdly Where is. Where do you buy stamps? Stamps are so like, expensive. I don't even know. <laughs> I was like, I, I think I've done an Amazon search for stamps, and that, I, that didn't turn up exactly. anything. I was like, then you can't get. But stamps I always anymore. read everything. I always hang it up. I always try to post about it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Stuff yeah. like that. So, um, yeah. Uh, you're, the you're, doing, you're doing fine. We're doing. Listen, <laughs> we're out here. We out here. Right. Here. Boys. Responding to fan mail. <laughs> um, okay, this could, can be our last one, but okay. since we already talked a little bit about Bandersnatch. Uh, George would like to know, are there any shows on streaming platforms that you tend to binge on your days off or in between shows? Mm. Oh, um, everything. Great British baking show. Uh, we Let's have chat. lots of fans. How <laughs> yes. can yeah. we not? It is calming. It is wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes me feel warm and gooey inside. Like, that's what I need. That's what I need. Like an underdone cake. It, like an <laughs> underdone cake. Exactly. Well done. Like l some sort of mochi. That's mm -hmm. what I'm going for. Okay. Um, so that one's great when mm. I'm looking for something like after a show or just like to wind down. Just to decompress. I yeah. will say, and this is like another totally sh sort of shameless plug because I'm on it for like two seconds. Please and Brandon Uranowitz is away. on it and I, you know, he's wonderful. But um, I got through Marvelous Mrs. Maisel like this, this, last, this season last season in was... like 
in like two days. Yeah, no. I did Flew like the whole it. thing. It was yeah. so good. The season is so good. Mm-hmm. It's so well written. And um, I'm trying to think of what else I've been. What are you in Maisel? No, I was just, just I was part of the telethon. Oh, yeah, okay. it was just oh, I love it was really telethon. great. It was so much yeah, fun. Um, but uh, yeah, but I was living for Brandon on that show. I was like, <laughs> he's oh, so great. Yes. Yeah, he's the best. No, the Paladinos. <laughs> yeah, the best. Yes. Alchemy, love to tap Broadway <laughs> for those roles. <laughs> Absolutely, they and really we love do, that. and it's yeah. a wonderful. Yeah, it definitely. So I would say that's been a lot of fun. Those are kind of probably the two things that I've watched right. most. Yeah. Recent. So this is what we've learned. Go see Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. <laughs> watch Bandersnatch. Yes. Watch Great British Baking. And yes. watch The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And, you... and then when you're done with all of that, Come you want to head over to the Majestic Theater yes. to watch Andrew Lloyd Webber's The Phantom of the Opera <laughs> starring Kaylee Ann Voorhees. That's the gig. Yes, a cra- That's of course. The gig. Amazing. Kaylee Ann, thank you so much. Thank it's you so, so much wonderful for seeing you. Me. You're the best. You're the One best. One of my favorite. Thank go you. see The Phantom of the Opera. You don't need me Please. to tell you to do that, but go do that. Uh, thanks again so much. Remind everyone where they can follow you, keep track of you. You can follow me on Instagram. I'm Kaylianne underscore Vu. And uh, I'm Kaylee underscore Vu on Twitter. No, Look you're at not. that. You're and at Kaylee Vu on Twitter. Oh, you know. <laughs> that was a test. You know. That was a test. Well, well, you might yeah. also just be able to Google it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Google me. But don't Amazing. look at the pictures because there are some bad ones. Out okay. There. So you've heard it here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Eric, why don't you take us out? <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at five every single day on Facebook. And if you like podcasts, you can go to wherever you get your podcasts and type in hashtag tag live at five and slam that subscribe button. Tune in tomorrow when we talk to David Cromer of the Waverly Gallery.